Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for joining everyone. It's so good to see you all again. Uh, thank you so much for coming in and watching Draw This In Your Style. Hello, Shauna, Annika, Dorina. Good, so good to see you all. Thank you so much. Um, so today, if you guys were not here yesterday, we are joined by the lovely uh, Regonia. How are you doing, Reagan? I'm doing great, Cody. Happy to be here again. Yeah, of course. It's so wonderful to have you. Um, <laughs> but um, if you guys have never heard of Draw This In Your Style, basically it is when an illustrator will create a specific illustration um, for Draw This In Your Style. They'll upload it online and then they'll invite everyone and anyone to come and redraw that exact illustration in their own artistic style. So basically we do that on this show, but with a twist. Um, so me and Reagan, we picked a theme before the stream and it was autumn bus stop. And we each created an illustration based around that theme. And then we swapped them. And now we are drawing each other's in our own style. But before we get to that, I wanted to throw it over to Reagan to give a little bit of an intro to who she is and what she does and what kind of work she does and, and what's her favorite vegetable. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi everybody. Um, my name is Reagan Dickard on the internet. I'm known as Ragonia, and my business is Ragonia Art. I am a freelance illustrator and artist based out of Seattle, Washington. Um, I do digital, illustra digital illustration <laughs> as well as traditional illustration with Posca markers, gouache, um, watercolor, block printing, uh, sculpting, really any kind of artistic medium I can get my hands on. Um, I like to draw cats, fruits and vegetables, um, nerdy stuff, spooky stuff. I love Halloween very much. And around this time of year, you'll see me draw so much fall and Halloween content. I love witches and ghosts and monsters and pumpkins <laughs> and all that. In fact, my, my cat's name is Pumpkin. Oh, yes. Oh, I love Pumpkin. She's so cute. <laughs> yeah, she's a little torty. She's a cutie. <laughs> and... Um, I do portraits and uh, editorial illustration um, logos, just any any art jobs I that come my way. And uh, my favorite vegetable uh, is broccoli. I love broccoli. Oh, so yeah, much. I love roasted broccoli. Super good. Oh yeah. We, we put uh, broccoli in our stir fries, my partner and I, and mm -hmm. broccoli is always like the jewel. Like we have to like count how many pieces of broccoli we have so that we, <laughs> Don't, one doesn't have more than the other. <laughs> yes, of course. The bro broccoli is super good. I agree. <laughs> All right, you guys. So we're going to hop over to uh, the drawing section. And so we can show off what our uh, Draw This In Your Styles look like if you guys missed yesterday's stream. So this is the one that I created uh, for Reagan to draw. So Reagan is creating that one over on her scene over there. And this is the one that Reagan created that I am redrawing. Um, so yesterday we worked on our sketches a little bit. I finished mine. I think we both finished our sketches offline actually. Yep. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be working on coloring today. Um, I did the, the, the little, these the little characters. I love the little goblin character. It's fantastic. I'm really excited to see uh, some color getting on this today. <laughs> it looks so good. So cute. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. Hamza, hi Sam, Bernie, um, Mir, RB, thank you so much. Welcome you guys, it's good to see you all. Hey Umicorn, Steve, hi Einstein, welcome, Gareth, Clever, everyone. <laughs> so many people hopping in and thank you so much for joining you all. All right, I'm gonna lower the opacity and it's gonna be, I, I, I'm really enjoying, um, especially, so you are my second guest on Draw This In Your Style so far. And what I'm really enjoying is for what I like about Draw This In Your Style in general is just being able to see your own artwork in somebody else's eyes. I oh, think yeah. that that's so fun. Um, I, I just being able to like give the a single prompt to so many different artists and see how different it comes out every single time. And I'm very excited to see my characters in your colors. I think that that's gonna be really fun. <laughs> yeah, I love that as, as well. It's so satisfying to see like, I also like to see if people like interpret it in the same way that you do in terms mm -hmm. of like emotion or story. Like 
if you're like, oh, I meant that person to be like surprised when I drew it. And if someone either sees that and reads it as one thing, um, or even they see it and decide to take it in a different direction, I think that's really fun. Right. Yeah. I've also seen um, Draw This In Your Styles where the composition is just totally changed. And I love mm -hmm. those ones too, because it's like, wow, I, I didn't even think about that composition. Like this looks awesome. It's like, a, like you said, it's like a total different interpretation of the story and what's happening with the characters and everything. I think that's just really neat. I so agree. It's so fun. Oh, one of my favorite things about uh, the uh, online art community, mm -hmm. actually, little games like this really spurs creativity. Yeah, just like little like community events. Um, yes. Yeah, like like all the monthly lists and stuff like Doggist or Mermaid. Have you done any of those other ones besides October, the October lists? You know, I, um, n never all the way through. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Inktober I've done a couple times, of course, um, partially because, uh, Inktober was actually one of the first things that got me back into making art after, mm -hmm. um, doing something totally different in college. I studied architecture in college. Actually, I saw really? in one of your, heard in one of your previous streams, you were interested in landscape architecture. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah, I was also, uh, that was one of the things when architecture wasn't working for me, I was like, landscape architecture? Maybe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. That's so, so I, cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fun field. Um, not, not uh, quite for me, but um, fun to check out. Mm hmm and uh, then after college, I uh, worked in restaurants because I thought I might want to open a restaurant. Mm. And that also was not for me. <laughs> That's but a tough field. <laughs> it is a really tough field, man. Shout out to anybody who works at a restaurant, runs a restaurant, any of it. It's, yeah. uh, it's hard. It's extremely stressful. Um, but fun as well. I've never, mm -hmm. I've never worked so quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you really, you gotta go, right? If your dishes have to come out in 10 minutes. Um, but then, uh, that first year since I was working at the restaurant, I did, uh, Inktober and it really kind of unleashed, uh, you know, showed me that I can, that I can draw still. Wow. That's so cool. It was, it's great. It's a, it's a great challenge. I, I feel sad for people who feel kind of, I mean, I understand it, but you know, I hear so much of people saying that it's such a stressful thing, you know, Yeah. and, uh, I'm sad that it has become that for so many people. And yeah, again, I understand why. Yeah, for sure. I think it's like, it's the, the, you know, it's that pressure that people put on themselves to, um, constantly post on social media and that's that's definitely a struggle in itself um yeah. that pressure that you put on yourself is is becomes so much more difficult than the actual artwork <laughs> yeah exactly. it's it's hard mm -hmm. but yeah I, I'm I um like I I definitely highly recommend um if you want to get involved in Inktober or Drawtober or anything like that like just do it just try it casually especially if it's the first year you've ever done it before um, do it casually, uh, just, just do a few of them and, you know, like, don't pr try not to put that pressure on yourself, um, to, you know, do every single day if it's not working out with your schedule or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, just, just try to have fun with it, you know? Yeah. It reminds me a lot of, um, when Animal Crossing was really big at uh, the start of last year, that at first, I mean, it is for a lot of people and, and stayed a very like fun and communally bonding thing. And then I saw so much content about people saying how str stressed they were about Animal Crossing. Really? Well, <laughs> yes, people saying like, oh, everybody else's like islands look so good and I like want to share mine, but it looks so ugly. And like, I'm stressed by how great everybody's looks and I'm like internet <laughs> oh yeah no don't, don't be stressed by Animal Crossing <laughs> yeah I mean it, it can be great obviously but like basically if it's making you stressed it's defeating the point right mm -hmm. it's uh it's, it's not about that but it's so fun you said you're not doing uh Inktober this year 
Correct. Yeah, because I'm doing all of these uh, draw this in your styles. I I think that that would be a little bit too much on my plate <laughs> if I were to do yeah. a list. <laughs> Although yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really love doing, I really enjoyed doing my list last year. Um, and if I wasn't doing this, then I definitely would have done a list. Um, just because my artwork is really centered around, um, you know, autumn and everything like that. That's kind mm -hmm. of my brand. And so I always just get really inspired around this time of year to make a lot of art. So it kind of just works out for me that the main like kind of list event that goes on in the community is um during fall so i really do enjoy it oh yeah it's great i understand though last last year yeah i made a little short list and i didn't even do that <laughs> yeah because i was i was feeling so overwhelmed with everything like i made a list that was like 10 things and it was like as low stress as possible and i was like yeah this is too much for me already <laughs> yeah uh, Urkamit in chat says, seen enough kitchen nightmares to know I don't want to run a restaurant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dorina says, looking forward to the upcoming Inktober. Have you guys picked any lists that you're going to do? Are you, are you going to do the, the like official list or have you, have you picked out a different artist list uh, so far? If you have any recommendations for lists, please, uh, let, let us know in the chat, like, like recommend any artists that are doing lists. Um, so, uh, other people in chat can maybe go check out their lists on Instagram or something like that. Great suggestion. I need, I need a list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of making one and now I'm thinking of not, or maybe I will. I like to keep myself and everybody else on their toes. Yeah, you'll figure it out last minute. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm, I'm doing a list. Here it is. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> it's back. <laughs> what was your theme for your list? Yours yours was uh, bears, right? Bear to it was called Beartober, um, but it was mostly just like autumn, a very like kind of like cozy autumn things that I typically draw on my artwork. Cute. Very fun. Fairtober. <laughs> uh, Sam in chat says, yeah, I had that feeling with Inktober. Um, I figured if it seems stressful, there's no point in putting that on yourself. Just too much going on already. Absolutely. Especially if you're also an artist that's on top of that doing client work and, and stuff like that for um, your income and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, just do it for fun, you guys. It's fun. I think I think it's good, especially for um, professional artists. The, the reason I'm thinking of doing it is I've had so little time to do uh, personal art right this year and in the last two years, or I've, I've given myself so little time to do personal art that um, you know having a challenge like this, a big community challenge, is a really good encouragement and kind of like an excuse in your brain to do personal art. Sure. Yeah. I think that's that's uh, one of the reasons um, the the creator uh, J Jake Parker started it was he wanted to do more inking right and right just like I'll just give myself a challenge and anyone else can join if they want to and then it became a community phenomenon yeah <laughs> it's pretty cool so cool. So Reagan has the goblin hair as blue. What do you guys think that I should do the goblin hair as? I'm not entirely sure. I'm I'm unsure if I should do. Um, I'm thinking about doing a like a darker color, so we have some darker contrast against the the lighter green. Maybe like a dark brown or a black. What do you guys think? Or maybe we'll just go funky crazy and do like purple <laughs> gold <laughs> or, or just maybe like another another green tone so it's just like green skin she's all monochrome monochromatic Ooh, <laughs> stylish uh Urkamet says dark like the boots, like dark brown. Uh, Shauna says a blue, blue hued dark greens. Oh, so like 
So like uh, like this dark teal maybe that I have in my in my my other illustration. Um, Deanna says orange, um, dark brown with a blue streak. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ooh, blue streak. Let's try. Edgy. Let's try the teal and see how that looks. I liked the teal. Teal cotton <clears throat> green. Hmm. And what's great about digital art is you can always go back and change it too. It's very, very forgiving. Very flexible. Yes. <laughs> I always do that too. A lot of the time in my workflow is I'll just throw a color down and then I'll just lock the transparency um, mm -hmm. and just try a bunch of different colors over top of it. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Love to lock the transparency. If any of you are unfamiliar with that term, by the way, um, basically locking the transparency on um, digital art, on Photoshop specifically, we can talk about, um, basically allows you to color within a shape that you've already previously created. So if we make this little blobby, blobby here, <laughs> Um, and I know you can't see my tools right now, but if you go on the uh, layer panel and you can see at the top, it says the word lock and then directly to the right of it, there's like a little checkerboard pattern. You can click that and then there's a lock, uh, a, a, like a little lock icon that appears on your layer. And now you can paint um, inside of that shape with a different color, like if you so choose, without having to redraw that shape. <laughs> It's very, very handy. I might actually steal some of the, some of these colors from this palette. Do you ever do that, Reagan, where you go like to some of your old artwork and just be like, okay, I liked how the colors looked in this in this painting. I'm gonna I'm gonna reuse all of these colors. Although you pretty much use a pretty simplistic palette to begin with. So yeah, <laughs> you yeah. probably say that for every piece. <laughs> yeah, you caught me. That's every single piece that I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> every time. Yeah, I have a, I generally have one. It's more unusual if I get a new color, then I'm like, right. spicy. <laughs> What's she That's doing? new. Ad adding purple? Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Chat says teal hair looks good. All right, we are keeping the teal hair then. It is so. <laughs> oh, let's see it. Oh, cute. It looks like Yoda. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it's Yoda's girlfriend. <laughs> She's going. Here she goes. <laughs> going for a date. Going for a date. Yep, exactly. We figured out what she's doing with her evening. Yeah, it's not a uh, baby Yoda anymore. It's like teenage Yoda. <laughs> That's what's hot now. In recording chat said, just wanted to say, LOL, is that Yoda? <laughs> 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 yes. yes officially yes. now it is officially yoda yoda <laughs> yoda's <Good> relative <laughs> oh so cute it's so <laughs> hard not to look at your your cute drawing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I know I'm looking over on, I have the stream up so I can glance it at uh, yours going on too. I like how you're interpreting the wind. I think that that's really fun. Like the little, little blobby shapes coming in and out. That's really cool. Thank you. I like to do this kind of like cutout style. It uh -huh. looks pretty crazy at first. <laughs> Maybe it looks crazy at the end, we'll see. Hmm. 
All right, you guys, I have another question. So Reagan has the hat as red in the original. <laughs> should we stick with red or should we try a different color? We could do, we could do like the orange to kind of like bring the orange of the pants up to be cohesive with the outfit or what do, what do you guys think? We could do like uh, some kind of complimentary color or we could stick with red for like warm tones. Again, sticking with like monochromatic outfits. <laughs> she cute, she cute. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I die. Though her eye is a little bit lopsided. That's okay. We can fix that, honey. It's okay. We can bring that back up. <laughs> you're good. You're good. <laughs> She's just looking a little sleepy. Your best. Okay. Uh, go bright, maybe orangey red. Okay, let's maybe, yeah, I kind of have this. It's actually the same color that I used for her blush. Let's um, let's try that one. And if it's a little bit too bright, then we can always just tone it down. So I noticed, so yesterday you, you mentioned that you never use brown, but I noticed that you're using orange as, <laughs> as like a, a, a stand-in for brown, which I think is really fun. It's kind of just like a, it's a brighter brown. <laughs> it is a brighter brown. Bold way, bold way of looking at the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, I like those kinds of like color puzzles, if that makes sense, with mm -hmm. a limited color palette. Like, yeah, man, a limited. I, I, I have so much respect for artists like you that have such a limited palette. Um, I do use a limited palette, but I usually have maybe like looking at this one, maybe like five to seven ish colors, and then also like lighter and darker versions of those colors too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've tried working with like a three color palette, I'm like, this is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be done it can't be done i'm no it's impossible <laughs> yeah yeah it's, I, I think it's really fun it feels like it feels like freeing to me mm. it's also kind of influenced by um i'm definitely influenced by printmaking mm. it uses very limited color palettes and that's something i'm trying to lean into even more about uh, using those colors to make other colors, you know, and using transparencies that way. I, I tried that a big, a little bit at the beginning of the stream and I think I'm gonna drop it cause I wanna have, I don't wanna spend the whole time experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that actually makes me think of um, on your Instagram, you have, um, you did like an Easter set last year yeah and yeah it, and it kind of has like that transparency almost like uh like a multiply layers and it makes it look like it was it was printed i really love that look it's super cool yep yep exactly i'm uh experimenting with that i, I also love that look it's pretty tricksy though i i still um i don't know it's just a fun technique yeah mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really fun and I like to use like, like I'm doing right here, like cutouts into like the background colors mm -hmm. and the interplay, it's like, it's like a little puzzle piece of everything, like what's like fitting together this way. And then making sure the color is like, uh, you know, it overlap in a way that still feels relatively clear. That's why I stopped and like went into the background. Cause I'm like, oh, that's going to form inform a lot of the colors and design choices on the top. Right, exactly. I experienced that with my own artwork too, um, because a lot of the time I'll use like this lighter cream color, but if I'm mm -hmm. using a darker color, mm -hmm. um, the values of the colors um, for the objects and everything, the characters is really gonna change when the background 
oh, is, yeah. is darker, you know? So you really have to put the background in first mm -hmm. and then figure out your other colors from there um, because it's really gonna change the atmosphere and um, just every, all the contrast for all of the colors. Yep, um, oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I use the outline or the background color for outlines some like sometimes like that too. I think it looks really nice, um, nice and clean. Actually, there's like one example of that in my illustration here, kind of just like separating the arm with yes. the background. Yeah, I, background. Ooh, a little bit of light here. Yeah, I, I noticed that. It's very cute. It, it uh, and it still like brings out his his little head in the front. Mm -hmm. Like shines a little bit. Yeah, so gotta start from the bottom up, right? Sometimes I'm doing a big background like this. Argument says, I love the beret color, Cody. It's bright, but still fits into the color palette. Cool, sweet. Ooh, I like it too. I think I might add maybe, let's check out like a darker, a little bit more saturated. And then I'm gonna do a clipping mask over top. And I mm -hmm. might add a little pattern but i might not like it but we'll see <laughs> <laughs> always experimenting <laughs> now she this looks like an acorn <laughs> oh and i love it I do that. it's fall oh my goodness it's on theme. i'm keeping it <laughs> It's on theme. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Acorn Yoda. Acorn Yoda. Hashtag Acorn Yoda. <laughs> New character. I love it. She is styling. Is she the character you're starting with? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even worked on anything else except um, Acorn Yoda yet. I haven't. She is the only thing that I have done. Because <laughs> she's she's pure joy personified. Mm -hmm. She's everything that's right with the world. Chris says, very cute hat. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I think I'll make her purse the same color as her hat and she's matching it was it was let's check yes it was red in reagan's original so i think we'll keep with that have you done many um draw this in your styles like other people's oh yes um i mean when the when the trend was like first starting out i did a lot mm -hmm. um especially because that was early on when i was um early on in my career um, and it was an excellent exercise, uh, you know, when I didn't have a ton of like client work or something. Um, and so I did a lot of them then. And at the time it was also a great way to grow your audience. It, mm -hmm. pro it probably still is now. Um, yeah. So I, I haven't lately, but I did so many in like 2018. They're so fun. Yeah, they are. I, it took me a long time to like a couple years to get into them really. Um, mm -hmm. But after I started doing them, I was like, man, this is really fun, especially if like <clears throat> uh, an artist of any skill level, mm -hmm. it's great if you, let's say, are like feeling uninspired or you feel like you've hit a, like an art block and you don't know what to draw. Like it's kind of almost like drawing fan art. You're like drawing something that already exists. Um, yes. So it, it's a great exercise to kind of just like get back into the groove of drawing. 
Oh, um, yeah. And I also think that it's really great for beginner artists too, for that same reason. Mm -hmm. It's like, again, it's, it's kind of like drawing fan art. I think fan art's a really great, um, great way for <clears throat> beginner artists to get going. That's definitely how I got going when I was younger is I did a lot of Pokemon fan art. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it takes out a lot of the like main design decisions and allows you to be like, what do I like about this and what don't? I like about yeah. this you know so you're like you can change what you don't like and uh it like gives you something to work from in the beginning yeah and it just it's just very freeing so go draw our drawings guys yeah exactly by the way that's a great great segue reagan <laughs> <laughs> um if you guys would like to draw either of our draw this in your styles you can post them on instagram with the hashtag adobe live dtiys or you can post it in the photoshop discord um under the draw this in your style channel and we can see them uh on discord or instagram um i most likely won't see them on twitter reagan might see them on twitter i personally don't really use twitter very much but i will definitely see them on instagram um, and I've been posting them to my Instagram stories if you guys, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a boost and stuff and to, you know, share the artworks in the community. <clears throat> it's a lot of fun. It's so fun. It's so, been so fun seeing people's interpretations of them so far. Mm -hmm. Don't quite know what to do here come back to it. that's another technique if you don't know what's going on at least i do this if you, if you don't like what's happening and on part of your drawing leave it and come back to it later mm -hmm. i you know i if it's funny that you mentioned that like oh you're you've only done yoda so far because usually i am someone that kind of just like bounces around a mm -hmm. lot on my work i usually don't stay in one spot for very long um and i just kind of like go with my gut and i just start coloring something <laughs> yeah and so you do the same thing you, mm -hmm. you stop and go to something else yep yeah because sometimes it it helps clarify if you work on something else and then you come back it's like like the background like i needed to work on the background first um of this to help inform what this bear is going to look like and what colors i'm going to use mm -hmm. uh, and if I'd stuck around on it for a long time, I might have then gone to the background and been like, oh, now I have to change everything. Yeah. Ishmael, what's going on here? So basically, uh, me and Reagan did our own illustrations before the stream. So this one was mine that I did. And this one was if I can zoom out, <laughs> this one was <laughs> Reagan's and um, <clears throat> we picked the theme uh, autumn bus stop and then we swapped our artwork before the stream. And now we are drawing our own interpretations of each other's drawings. Um, so I am drawing Reagan's illustration in my own style and vice versa. She's drawing mine in her own style. And feel free again, if you guys want to feel free to pick one or both of these. Um, sometimes people also combine them into one illustration um to feel free to uh, get involved and in, and pick one and and draw it in your own style we'd love to see your interpretation of either of our drawings excellent explanation <laughs> i try <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of the time in my artwork, I, uh, any kind of structure that I do is wooden. So I think I'm going to make the um, bus stop here wooden, maybe like logs, wood logs, I think. I support it. <laughs> <laughs> Ishmael says, I love this. I'm learning. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Chris says, I love that idea. Thanks, Cody. Yeah, no problem. I think uh, I think you're referring to like for um, just like beginner artists and just drawing, drawing, uh, draw this in your styles for something um, when you have artist block. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's really helpful. <clears throat> Hmm. 
Hmm. We love to learn. Yes, indeed. I think that's it's 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 really cool too. Um, I've always, um, I mean, I've been I've been live streaming my artwork for probably like seven years now, and um, I always not only learn something from other streamers, a lot a lot from other streamers, but also from the viewers as well. Um, there's definitely been a lot of illustrations that I've done as a streamer where it's technically like a collab with me and my me and my stream viewers and I think that that's a really uh awesome plus um for streaming artwork Aww. that's why I like to ask the viewers questions and stuff like that too it's it's a lot of fun to get them involved <laughs> nice here we go rock transparency Oh, there you go. It's happening. What are you using it on? I'm using it to draw the bear's body and so that it's like all one fairly cohesive shape. Mm. And then I'm using it to draw some different colors on the pants here. And then I'll go back in and add some line work as a separate layer uh, on top of that. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I kind of color, I actually kind of color in the same way. Um, like uh, I'll, I'll kind of like block in the shape and then I'll either lock the transparency or use a clipping mask over top of that layer. And then mm -hmm. I'll add on like the clothing like you're doing right now, for instance, um, on that one, one same shape. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really speeds it up because mm -hmm. then you're not trying to like line up all the little corners. Slowing yourself down. And I'll come back in with um, a line art brush to define it. Oh, I have a question for you. Okay. So I see you doing the like color in technique mm -hmm. um, for your, to add like a lot of texture to your solid colors. Um, how do you protect your wrist while you do that? <laughs> <laughs> if that you, if is it, a very good question. Actually, I'm not even, I'm not even really moving my wrist. I'm mostly just moving my fingers. Oh just very, very small, little tiny scribble movements. Mm. Although uh, I shouldn't be, I'm not the best person to talk about that because I have RSI in no. my, in my oh. oh no. Um, yeah, I've had it for a couple of years now, oh, um, man. but I've gotten a lot better at my posture. That was really what was the problem um, mm. and how I injured myself was my posture is that I would, I'm definitely a sloucher Oh, yeah. Um, so, and especially when I'm like reaching over my Wacom tablet to get mm. to my keyboard shortcuts, I'm mm. definitely a sloucher. Um, and that just like, just met, totally messed up my arm. Um, so nowadays I, I do use some keyboard shortcuts, but I mostly use my, um, express keys on the side of my tablet instead. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. these guys right here, because they're a lot closer to me and I don't really need to lean as much. Um, so you guys, PSA, make sure that you stretch your wrists and take breaks and don't slouch. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's not fun. Um, I mean, it's not RSI isn't, isn't incredibly painful or anything, but mm -hmm. my whole left arm will go numb just randomly not even when i'm drawing sometimes when i if i'm just leaning against like the back of my couch in a wrong way my whole arm will just go numb oh yeah oh gosh it's, it's not fun so I think I yeah felt the rumblings of that kind of thing yeah make sure you guys take care of yourselves have you ever had to take a break from working for rsi 
Yes. Um, if I'm having a really bad flare, I'll have to like sleep in my wrist brace and wear it regularly throughout the day. I try to um, like learn how to draw in the wrist brace, um, mm -hmm. but that can that can be re really hindering in my speed and also just the quality. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll kind of usually only do that when it's really flaring. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it can be difficult. <clears throat> I have heard that um, drawing in wrist braces, if you have kind of like long-term RSI, can be like ultimately worse for oh, your really? hand. Have you ever heard of anything like no, that? No, I haven't. Because it like holds your muscles. This is just what I, I can't remember the source, but so uh, please look this up if, if you, if this is interesting, like it holds your muscles in one place and if you're tr if you draw while you do it it means your muscles kind of weaken mm. because it's like relying on the brace to hold them up mm -hmm. so that when you take them off they're like not as strong or something kind of like sense. atrophies yeah it, yeah that's the word exactly yeah. um yeah i've just heard that recently and i was like oh i've seen a lot of people draw with their wrist brace braces like online I wonder yeah if there's any you know truth to this feels like it makes sense <laughs> uh sam says i have to be conscious of my posture and remember to stretch i also like to think and hope that weightlifting is a good uh, is good for strengthening those muscles in the wrists and arms yeah for sure i've also heard that back strengthening is um really helpful too it might not be something that occurs to you right away um but you know your back holds you holds everything up so back strengthening is really important too um, and, and back stretches too, not just your wrists, but shoulders and back stretches as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, after I, after I got RSI, I started looking up, um, like specific, like RSI stretching regiments on YouTube. And it was really helpful to get me out of that, like first few months where I had it and it got the flare back down. Yeah, I, I, it sounds like this was a similar case to you. I had a friend, I have a friend who is an illustrator for games who was having terrible pain in his wrist um, while drawing so bad that he had to stop drawing for like four months. Mm -hmm. um, and he was going to so many doctors and they kept trying to like treat his wrist. And after a lot of like it not working of treating like the wrist at themselves they discovered that it was like actually his shoulder that was like causing the pain in his wrist mm -hmm. and once he started treating his shoulder the like pain in his wrist went away yeah so it's like important to maintain all of it because yeah right it's all connected that way how fun to have human bodies <laughs> Yeah, I also have always just had lower back issues too. So a lot of the time I'll wear um, like a a back, like a stretchy back brace, just like mm. kind of like a, a pressure back brace to kind of like keep me up. It also helps my posture too. Um, yeah, so highly recommend. I, it's just like a copper fit, like stretchy, stretchy back brace. It helps a lot. Oh man, I woke up. <laughs> I woke up about an hour and a half earlier than I normally do because my lower back hurt so bad mm -hmm. and I couldn't go back to sleep, but I just had to do like a, a yoga um, thing. And so I'm, I'm having a bad, bad lower back time. Yeah. It's not fun. <laughs> so that, that hits home. <laughs> Uh, Sam says, for sure, I remember when I first uh, started using my Cintiq, which required me to sit up straight, my back got tired while drawing for the first week until I got used to it. Yeah, you gotta, gotta strengthen those back muscles. <laughs> I just recently got like one of those little hand, um, like hand, um, like strengtheners where you, where you like squish it, like squish it together. It's like, it's like a spring basically. And it like strengthens your hand. I was hoping that that would kind of help strengthen my hand muscles for RSI. You just got it? Yeah, just recently. 
I did um, end up doing it too much for the first week and I strained my arm, <laughs> but it's back to normal now. <laughs> oh man. Sounds like we need, we both need to go get massages. Seriously. <laughs> Workplace injuries. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, Erkamet says, don't forget to stretch, sit, flip, and save. That is my typical uh, PSA that I like to put in chat as a moderator, stretch, sit, flip, and save. So stretch your wrists, sip some water, flip your canvas, and save your work, everyone. I haven't saved my work at all during the stream yet, so I'm gonna <sighs> save now. <laughs> I love the flip. That's a good one. I just did that. <laughs> That's great. No time. We're, we're on screen here. No time for stretching. Yeah. <laughs> or saving. <laughs> it can be gone. It, it, what matters is the here and now. Yes. Wow, an hour really goes by so quickly. I know, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. I've barely even done anything. I did I did fashion Yoda, acorn Yoda, and <laughs> um some I I painted some logs and I did a roof. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> oh man. I know it goes by so fast when you're like just chatting and hanging out and hanging out with with uh, people in chat and everything, and it's just like wow. I feel like we just got here. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you post it online, you know, you, you work for hours on it and you post it online and people see it for, you know. Two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if that. <laughs> if that, yeah. If they see it at all. <laughs> You're like, it's fine. <laughs> Sam, fine. Sam just said, I can sip and stretch, but there's not enough room in here to do a flip. <laughs> Do a flip! Do a flip! Serena says, I need to get a stand for my Cinti because I catch myself quite often that I'm leaning forward while painting. I do that too. Especially after I like, I'll watch my, my past live streams and I'm like leaning forward like this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to like strap myself to the back of my chair. <laughs> That's me right now. Cause I'm working on my iPad. That's normally why I put like a bunch of pillows under right. my iPad to raise up. But this time risky business. Might as, might as well be going like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> totally off camera. Just. <laughs> I promise I'm working down here. <laughs> Not just crying. <sighs> little alligator. <laughs> I love his little round body that you did and like the little. The, like we were talking about yesterday, like the, the wiggly line for the inside of his mouth. I think that looks so cute. It had so much character. Thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> I gave him little overalls too, but you'll, you'll see. Oh, so cute. Momentarily. Or maybe not. Maybe you'll see you later. <laughs> Based on how it's going. Hmm. Should I add red to my color palette? I don't know. What do you guys think, chat? Chat. Do you think uh, do you think Reagan should add red as a as a as a accent color, or do you think that it looks it looks good right now? Should she add another color? People in chat are also saying that I have to remind myself to blink while I'm working too. 
<laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Uh, it happens. <laughs> red, maybe like an orange red. Whoa! Look at see see what you got me doing, Cody. Oh, there you go. <laughs> A brownie, orangey red. Well, I think it is about that time. We are going to pop on over to Instagram because we actually got a few more entries for this, uh, draw this in your style this morning. So I wanted to show those off. I can't believe how fast you guys work. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, considering, we, look at us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was about to say, we we haven't even gone halfway done yet. And you guys are like, oh, I finished it before you even did the first stream. <laughs> So I am going to go over to Instagram really quick so I can show those off. All right. So yeah, we had this really cute one. Um, I really loved how they did the eyes, the little face for this one. And there's a, a little sign that says ghost town. Oh, that's so cute. Cute. I like <laughs> the, the cloud. little texture. Yeah. The, the face on the clouds is so cute. <laughs> We got that one this morning. And this one we got this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> this one feels like a like classic advertisement or illustration. Like a yeah, gold does. type of illustration. Like a vintage. Yeah, it totally does. <laughs> the little face on the bear is super cute. Yeah. Oh, that one's by Dorena. Is Dorena still in chat? Actually, I think they were in chat earlier. Dorina was in chat earlier. Are they still here? Dorina, I love your work. It looks awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating. It looks super cute. <laughs> this one, <laughs> I thought this one was really funny. It says, hey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait, <laughs> Nano. The cool, the cool bus. Yeah, the cool bus. <laughs> very cool thank you guys so much for participating i really appreciate you all um and i think it is about that time um we only have a couple minutes left oh dorian is here thank you so much for for participating we really appreciate it we love your work thank you so much um all right so yeah guys don't forget to follow reagan on instagram um i think that's your main your main social media yeah um, yes. if, if there's anywhere else, like, uh, any, any other links that people can find you on that you would like? Yes. Yes. Um, I have a store with lots of spooky and not spooky arty goodness, like prints and earrings, like those avocado earrings up there and stickers and cards and pins and everything you could ever want from art at etsy.com slash Ragonia or ragonia.etsy.com. Um, spelled like here on the stream. Um, I also have a Patreon where I try to help people, uh, teach people about the intricacies of being a full-time freelance illustrator. Um, this week I have an article about scams and bad deals for artists to avoid, um, coming up on Friday. And that is at patreon.com slash Fragonia. And we have a lot of fun there. And... That's about all that I'm doing right now. You can keep up with anything else cool happening on my Instagram is where all the, the news happens. Very cool. Yeah, we're just we're just checking out your Instagram one more time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chris says, Chris says, those are wonderful. So glad I saw this stream. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh Darina says, Oh, this was their first uh participation in a draw this in your style. Thank you so much. It's so cool. Nice. <laughs> Well, all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Um, so Draw This In Your Style won't be back next week, but we will be back the week after that with a brand new guest and a new theme, which I will be um, giving little hints out on my Instagram and the uh, Discord channel if you guys want to see what, uh, try to guess what our next theme will be. <laughs> and uh, we will probably be posting our work whenever we might finish them. I have no idea when that will be for me. <laughs> Sometime this year, maybe. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. And thank you for watching uh, Adobe Live and hanging out. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.